Hello and welcome to this Adena tutorial where I'm going to show how to perform the nonlinear analysis of this tensile test specimen. The starting point will be the geometry and mesh that we put together as part of the previous Adena tutorial by using uh, parasolids. Before getting into the detailed steps of this process, I want to show you uh, some uh, final results. So here we are uh, prescribing or we are fixing the specimen at one of its ends and we are increasingly pulling from the other side and we can see how uh, we start to have necking, this necking effect showing at the center of the specimen. Um, plastic strains tend to accumulate here at the center and eventually once we overcome a certain level of plastic strains what happens is that the specimen just splits, it breaks. Now part of what I will show you is um, how to use large strains to be able to capture this effect. I have um, a test which, or an analysis which is uh, pretty much identical to the one I've just shown you, but I didn't use large strains. What I did was to invoke just small strains. And we can see that it um, doesn't matter how much we pull, um, the necking will actually not show up. The two analyses will give similar results when we are uh, in small strain ranges, but as we continue to pull, we see that, uh, well, they will make a difference. So let's go back to the uh, pre-processing screen. And here on the element groups that we created, um, if we right click and modify, we see that here we have to invoke, we have to define particularly the large strains to make sure that we capture the necking effect. Right, so what I'm going to do next is very quickly, I'm going to apply supports at the end of the specimen and we're going to apply a, a prescribed displacement that will increase, or increasingly uh, be applied to, to this other end. So I'm going to uh, switch off the mesh visualization and we're going to um, apply a fixity, all degrees of freedom to um, Faces, surfaces, double click on that field, select the surface, right click, finish and OK. And then we're going to apply our prescribed displacement uh, to the other side of the, of the specimen. So we take a displacement load type, define, add a new one. It's going to be one millimeter um, in the X direction. Apply to faces, double click select this face, right click and finish. We can apply and we see that we make a note that uh, this displacement is being controlled by time function number one. One thing we may want to do uh, is to confirm the dimensions of this specimen because this will drive the units of loading, materials and so on. So we can do this through a geometry measure or we can click this shortcut here, this little ruler. Um, so if we select an edge, for instance, that is 20, which is 20 millimeters. Uh, or I could also select a couple of points and it will give me exactly the same dimension. OK, so let's move on to uh, define our materials. Um, and in this case, we're going to have a multilinear plastic material model. We're going to add a New one, I'm going to have a Young's modulus of 210 E3 newtons per square millimeter, 0 0.3 is the proportions ratio, um, and I'm going to in introduce some density. Um, and then we're going to insert our nonlinear stress, strain stress curve. So in this case, I'm going to import an existing uh, CSV file, which I've uh, created before, and that has brought in my uh, stress strain curve. The first stress strain set of points needs to be consistent with my Young's modulus. This is the strain and the stress levels at which the material becomes plastic. So if I save, because these three values, as I introduced them, they are not entirely consistent. The yield stress and the Young's modulus have been kept constant and the strain value has been adjusted slightly. I can quickly uh, graph this plot and that is my uh, stress strain curve and we can see that it goes 
all the way up to a strain of 0 0.5. Now, uh, very importantly here, we have some options that we're going to explore. The first drop-down list is uh, allowing us to decide whether we want the material to rupture once the uh, last uh, strain level is uh, overpassed, or whether the um, well the stiffness uh, at that point will just be extrapolated uh, beyond the maximum strain that we have defined. In this case, I'm going to select rupture element, um, and by default, Adina expects uh, true stress strain data. Click OK, and the material is is now ready. We are now ready to uh, close. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to uh, confirm my time function, which goes from 0 to 100. Um, and my time step strategy, which uh, I'm going to change slightly uh, from uh, what I had to um, the values we see on the screen. I decided to refine my time step after solution time 4 because I know that at that level, we will start to have fairly high plastic strains and convergence difficulties may arise. So we are solving up to a solution time of 5.25. And because our time function is, well, it increases linearly, that means a total um, a displacement supply here of 5.25 millimeters. We can click OK and OK. A um, couple of more things that I wanted to show um, here under analysis options, particularly after rupture, um, convergence may become a, a challenge. So I decided to turn on the low speed dynamics option uh, that will uh, kick in if at some point analysis uh, doesn't converge. And another thing that I decided to um, switch on is the energy view here under control. Um, and so this will give me um, a graph of the um, accumulated um, elastic and plastic um, strain energy, um, which is useful to visualize, particularly when we start to get into the plastic ranges and the material eventually breaks. So I'm going to click OK, and now we are just ready to solve the analysis. The analysis starts to run, and here, as usual on, uh, on graph, I can visualize the um, plastic, elastic, energy, uh, kinetic, and so on. And we can also monitor the convergence progress of, of the analysis. Right, so the analysis is now complete. We fast forward it a little bit, and we can see that it's taken uh, just over five and a half minutes to complete. Click OK. We could also uh, view the graphs and see the different uh, energy components, see the evolution during the sign steps. Um, so I'm going to close and close the dialogs. And let's switch the uh, post-processing screen and open our results files, which have just been uh, created. And well, let's start by interrogating the uh, dress and strain, for instance. So uh, we create a new band plot. Let's choose uh, effective stresses. Maybe let's go back to uh, previous time steps uh, and apply. So that's the uh, effective stress, which is equivalent to von Mises. Uh, we can, of course, look at uh, the accumulated effective plastic strain. So we click apply. Um, when we define the material, we set up a maximum strain of 0 0.5 beyond which um, we want the material to, to rupture, the mesh to rupture. So we say how just before, while the model is, or material is necking, um, just before the 0 0.5, uh, and that's where, yeah, the, the mesh is actually um, splitting. Another thing that I want to do is look at uh, the sum of reactions. So what's the resistance that we see here as we try to impose a displacement? So I'm going to change the background color to, uh, to black for this to, to plot the graph. Um, so we go into definitions, model point, special reaction sum, and let's create a, 
uh, reactions uh, point name and now we can find this from uh, from graphs uh, reaction and let's look at the, the overall reaction magnitude and we see how um, we the, the model or the, the specimen is only able to take a, a force to a certain extent uh, and after necking starts to happen that resistance go down to the point where well the um, the specimen has actually broken and the force uh, drops drastically. So this concludes this training video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.